Now we go to the next topic, and that is the topic about uh, the future of smart cities. And we're going to do that with our partner, uh, Prime uh, Invest Capital. Hyman. Hi, Hello. good morning. Good morning, Wouter. Nice uh, seeing you again. Yeah, nice seeing you again. The last time we had a whole studio build up and uh, it was a little bit crazy. This time it is a little bit more, uh, uh, well, laid back and, and easy. Um, how was this morning for you? Yeah, good, good. A uh, little bit rainy here from the city of The Hague, but um, and also, uh, yeah, due to all these uh, COVID-19 uh, measurements in the Netherlands too, working from home again, yeah. which, is, uh, which yeah. is not a very tempting uh, foresight uh, for the upcoming uh, next weeks. No, I will give you your 10 minutes to talk about the future of smart cities. So uh, go ahead. Thank you very much. I'll just share my screen. And um, so we can all look at the same page um, and I'll make it a big screen. Yeah, thank you very much um, for introducing me, uh, Wouter. Um, yeah, just a small introduction from my side. My name is Heiman Visser. Um, I work for a institutional investment company in the Netherlands, offices actually in Utrecht and also in, uh, in Berlin. We do investments uh, all over Europe in uh, different parts of, uh, of assets. Um, but today I would like to focus on a, um, a new product that we launched uh, just two years ago. And we did that together with um, the bank of the, of the Dutch municipalities, uh, the BNG Bank. Um, and I would like to uh, elaborate a little bit on that, what we're doing, because it's quite an innovative uh, uh, product. Um, looking at the sustainable, sustainable development goals um, that were set by the uh, United Nations, 17 goals. This proposition that we launched together with the BNG Bank uh, ticks three of those 17 bo boxes. Industry, innovation and infrastructure, sustainable cities and communities, and also climate action, um, as we're really working on the sustainability of Dutch municipalities. But what is it all about? Um, if you look in the Netherlands, we have about 355 municipalities working all in their different ways and different manners. But if you see and look at their public lighting, so street lights up around in the city, just 10 to 15 percent is implemented by energy saving LED lights. And if you look to the climate treaty and the Dutch Energy Act that was signed two years ago, Dutch municipalities need to reach at least 50 percent energy savings by 2030. And in the current pace that we're replacing traditional street lighting by LED and dynamic LED lighting, we're never going to make and uh, we're never going to fulfill this goal that we set that we set uh, uh, to ourselves. On the technology side, um, there's an action plan, digital connectivity, published by the Ministry of uh, Economic Affairs in 2018, um, that is really focusing on the rollout of uh, 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 fiber optic networks, but also, I mean, a maximum uh, uh, pace in the rollout of 5G mobile networks. But especially for mobile 5G networks, uh, the public space is needed, also for fiber in the ground, is needed for the rollout plans for those telecom operators. Now, TNO Research, which is a very famous research institute in the Netherlands, did a research study with two municipalities and eight private companies to see in what way we can facilitate in the best way within municipalities, the rollout of these uh, uh, fiber or uh, 5G uh, optic networks. And the Smart City Initiative that we launched um, is exactly uh, uh, facing on this topic. It is innovative, it is sustainable public lighting, and it's also facilitating the rollout of these uh, 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 technology infrastructures with a additional revenue model for municipalities instead of just bearing the cost and having to adopt all those infrastructure within their cities. Because one of the main things is if you would like to implement technology in the public space, you need a combination of fixed and wireless networks to create a smart public nodes network. 
And that's exactly also the outcome of the TNO research study. Because they looked at, at multiple objects that are now in the public space, uh, looking at uh, traffic signs, uh, looking at uh, 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 traffic lights, for example, uh, looking at uh, underground waste containers or looking at street lights. And especially those street lights are very interesting because there are more than 3.5 street lights in the Netherlands. They're usually placed in between 50 meters or 60 meters apart of each other. So they can be turned out in a ex excellent grid for multiple functionalities to use this public street lights for, um, and whether it's camera surveillance, whether it's Wi-Fi, whether it's EV charging for cars, whether it's um, uh, sensors for the implementation for uh, temperature, uh, 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 et cetera, et cetera, but also the sustainable public lighting. And so the simple model is from a single use object that a street light up till now is, we can use those grids of public street lights in a more effective and a more multi-purpose way for different functionalities than they're used only right now. Because what does it look like right now? I'm driving myself a um, uh, electric car. Uh, so I park my car in, in multiple municipalities in the Netherlands. And I try to tend to take pictures of the situations where I park my car. Um, this is in, in, in a city in the Netherlands where you can see a separate charging point placed in between 90 centimeters of a public street light. Why do we not combine these kind of things? Um, the second is another city in the, in the south of the Netherlands. Um, here you see a, a public street light. And if you look at all the different fun functionalities that are not in a really nice aesthetic way are implemented in the street light, um, uh, instead of just on top or on the side or on the outside of the uh, of the street light, it does not look neat, and the whole public space gets out of control. And then sometimes I uh, tend to say, I mean, it, it all it, it almost looks like 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 China or like South Korea, uh, where we just put all the technology on the outsides of buildings and street lights, etc. While this is a public view of a Scandinavian city, in which it is implemented all in a street light. And this is just an example uh, because there are multiple vendors and technology providers that already provide these kind of technologies, but it does look neat. The city is not getting out of control um, uh, and you get a really clean site within, uh, uh, within uh, uh, these kind of cities. But it is a step by step approach. Um, the first step we usually take is we help the municipality by making a business case to get their street light more sustainable. We usually save up to 50% energy savings, but we have examples already right now of municipalities that even save up more, more than 80% on energy savings by implementing these new technologies. But you save also quite a lot on maintenance. The second step is, is that we help municipalities by just implementing just a small part of their public lighting infrastructure with a couple of smart public notice. And it could be in between five or maybe 10%, not even more, to get this additional revenue potential because you rent out the street lights to public bodies or to, pi or to private bodies um, to get this revenue model going by using the single use of the street light for multiple use, uh, which makes it a lot more effective. And in this way, you'll slowly move towards step three, um, which is getting into a complete smart city with a fully rolled out smart grid in which the municipality benefits um, from the additional revenues that are gained by using their infrastructure because it stays their infrastructure. Also by investing together with the BNG bank, we made an arrangement with the BNG Bank that the ownership, even legal and also economical ownership, stays within the municipality. We do it not alone. 
um, we do that with a, a lot of partners who help us in every single project in every single municipality and whether it's a mobile operator whether whether it's a construction company whether it's ev charging companies that help us also together with economic boards in the netherlands um, to get the model going because it's a neutral model um, and all these partners are more than willing to help municipalities to get into this new revenue model um, but we need to do it together so to finalize it's an innovative realization of additional revenues for the municipalities don't only bear the costs by different companies that come into your city um, uh, and would like to uh, would like to use your public infrastructure you can definitely ask a fee for that second is we guarantee a acceleration of the sustainability goals and that the municipality in 2030 is actually uh, 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 compliant to the climate goals that are set by the Dutch government. Control and ownership of the public space. As I said before, the municipality still is the owner of the public space, is owner of the public streetlights, street lights, and has also the control over their public space. And together with the BNG Bank, we provide a smart, cheap and alternative financing uh, in a way that municipalities in the Netherlands do not use by now. If you're interested in the model, um, please visit our website. And whether you are a municipality or whether you are a service company or a technology company, we are open to talk to you. We're open to see your solutions and we're open to work together to a sustainable and innovative public space. Thank you very much.